The aspiration to one day manipulate and even control weather and climate is by no means new. Over the past hundred years or so, there have been various proposals and research projects to this end, especially in military circles. But as global warming sets in and global greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise, plans are indeed afoot to bring the global climate under human control. Geoengineering is a term used to describe large-scale targeted intervention in the Earth's atmosphere, the oceans and the biosphere. There are two basic directions that technological manipulation of the climate could take. Solar radiation management is the process of reflecting the sun's rays back into space, with the result that the climate heats up less. Carbon dioxide removal removes greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. At this time, none of the relevant technologies actually exist. There are pilot projects for some, but others remain purely theoretical in nature. Their effects, however, could have devastating consequences. Regarding solar radiation management, one technology in particular is the subject of research, so-called stratospheric aerosol injection. This might, for example, involve large numbers of aircraft scattering large quantities of particles, such as sulfur dioxide, into one specific layer of the atmosphere, namely the stratosphere. The particles would then act as a reflective filter, throwing a percentage of solar radiation back into space and thereby preventing it from heating up the atmosphere in the first place. The objective is thus to artificially cool down the global climate. But what would be the effects on our planet of such a large-scale technological experiment? These could be devastating. It is unlikely that cooling of the planet could be achieved in a uniform way. SAI would therefore produce regional winners and losers. The total global rainfall would be less. In Asia, SAI could upset the complex system governing the monsoon, on which the water and food supply of two billion people depends. It could also lead to droughts in sub-Saharan Africa, while causing flooding in Latin America. As for further unpredictable side effects of large-scale climate manipulation, these might become apparent only after it had been implemented. Solar radiation management would address only one symptom of climate change, namely global warming. Meanwhile, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere would continue to build up. And what if this technological intervention in the climate system were suddenly halted for technical, political, social or economic reasons? This would trigger a shock to the system, a so-called termination shock. The shock would cause a sudden increase in temperature, leading to an acceleration in climate change. Many plants and animals, as well as human societies, would be unable to adapt to such rapid climate change. To prevent a termination shock, the particles would have to be distributed continuously over decades, centuries or even millennia. Not only would this require many millions of tons of sulfur, it would also make humanity dependent on the functioning of a large-scale technological manipulation of the climate. If solar radiation management is associated with such great risks and regionally divergent effects, how should an international consensus for its implementation ever be reached and maintained over centuries? And if no consensus is possible in the first place, who would come out on top setting the global thermostat to suit their own interests? How would those who are most vulnerable to the negative impact make their voice heard? Any application of solar radiation management that is not coordinated on an international scale would have disastrous consequences for world security and could lead to conflict. The use of such technology as a weapon is also a real risk, not least because economically and militarily powerful states are the ones that have the infrastructure and resources to carry out large-scale interventions in the climate. It therefore seems virtually impossible to exercise democratic control over solar radiation management. The global application of such powerful technologies urgently requires a robust international framework in which regulation can be enforced. In the case of technologies that are shown to be too dangerous, there should be an outright international ban. 
It is clear that large-scale manipulation of the climate is not a sustainable solution to the problem of climate change. The only sure way is to reduce our emissions much more drastically and comprehensively than ever before.